Well, I think what's in it for the taxpayer is that the present welfare system just is not working in providing an incentive for people to move from welfare to work. And uh, uh, it is, of course, true that there will be for several years an investment to the future, the coverage of the working poor, uh, and uh, the programs that will be administered uh, by the Department of Labor will be an investment in moving uh, people off of welfare and out of poverty into uh, complete uh, economic uh, independence. Uh, uh, this will t be take several years, but we're convinced that the, the welfare reform legislation is the means of getting there, and if we stay with the current law and the current system, we will continue to have the, the types of in disincentive for employment and for work uh, that have, has been characterized by current federal and state law. Although Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade stood by in the courtroom all day today, all of the prosecution was handled by his first assistant, Doug Mulder. Mulder called a total of 10 witnesses to the stand. Many of those were exploratory, explanatory, or investigative type witnesses, giving specific information about locations, showing maps and drawings, and more than 50 items of evidence were introduced into the record by the prosecuting attorneys today. This morning, probably the most expressive witness on the stand was Wendell Dover, one of the deputies who was involved in the incident. Dover was shot by one bullet, he said, by Leonardo Lopez. However, he recovered. In his testimony today, he related the beginning of the day of February 15, 1971, as a call to investigate a burglary in Ellis County. Subsequently, he said, they were resulted in a trip to Dallas for investigation at 2810 Ingersoll, and that's where the bloody afternoon began. Dover related that he and the other four men were taken to the river bottoms at Canada Drive in West Dallas. He described the way the shootings took place there. A recess for lunch and then this afternoon, perhaps the most outstanding part of the testimony, involved the medical examiner's office in Dallas County. Attorneys for the defense, working for Leonardo Lopez, specifically Don Metcalf, endeavored in his testimony, going with what had gone before, to try to establish that perhaps his client, Leonardo Lopez, might have only shot A.J. Robertson once. The man was shot a total of four times, apparently trying to build a case that perhaps it was Guzman who, in fact, shot the fatal shot at A.J. Robertson. It's been a long and trying day here with 10 witnesses, as we say, introducing a great deal of testimony. The court has recessed until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Belton. The hearing today in Judge Hughes' courtroom on the 15th floor of Dallas' new federal building was the first major hearing to be held in this structure. Sharp was not in the courtroom, as had been speculated earlier. His attorney, Morton Sussman, however, pointed out that Sharp is playing golf, saying that his doctor had told him to play golf four hours a day for his health. Sussman is the lawyer who engineered the probated sentence and immunity from further prosecution in exchange for Sharp's testimony in Houston. 
His other attorney, Jerry Hill, argued the motion before Judge Hughes today. He said that the grant of immunity from criminal prosecution should also be applied to this civil case because the Fifth Amendment guarantees that a witness should not be subjected to the infamy and public disgrace that would come about from his testimony, as well as protecting him from criminal prosecution. The Securities and Exchange Commission attorneys, Robert Watson, argued, however, that since it is a civil matter, that even if Sharp loses this civil case, it would only require that he obey the law in the future. He also pointed out that Sharp already is not allowed to deal in securities regulated by the Security and Exchange Commission because he pleaded guilty and was convicted of infractions of the law in Houston. John Osorio's attorney, Robert Jones, also argued in the motion very briefly that Sussman, Sharp's attorney, should be removed as the coordinator for all defendants, saying that Sharp is rather unique among the defendants at this time and that Sussman, therefore, could not really act honestly in behalf of all defendants. However, Judge Hughes overruled that motion, too. So the trial comes up August 30th, and it should be very interesting, since this will be the first public hearing in which Frank Sharp apparently will be required to testify, and everyone anticipates some rather interesting testimony coming out of this case. This is Roger McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move. Well, I think that this game uh, actually should replace the one that they play in Chicago where the pros, uh, champion pro team, plays the college all-stars. This game has been a mismatch for a number of years, and uh, it'd be better off playing, taking the best college team in the country and playing them against the uh, pro champions and try to bring a team in there and assemble them in the short time they have and play the pro champions. But I, I think that if they eliminate a game, that's the game they should eliminate. Uh, uh, this game is a game between college all-stars for the benefit of college football. And I, I believe it's a good game, and uh, you need a city like Lubbock, which is a college town, in order to support a game like this. But the people of Lubbock, uh, Lubbock have in indicated they want the game to continue there and have done a great job. Amended garbage ordinance will provide for uh, some changes. Of course, the one that uh, most of us are concerned about is the increase in rates, the charges, and the charge now for garbage pickup at the curbside or in the alley is $2 per month. This will be increased 50 cents to $2.50 a month. The uh, customers who want uh, to have their garbage picked up and carried out by the collectors now pay $3.50 a month. This will go up a dollar and a half to $5 per month. And when does this take effect? This, this takes effect uh, the 1st of July, but it will not be on the customer's bill until the August water bill is received. So there will be no increase in payments during the month of July. Sasha, does a uh, road rally in Mexico begin rather quietly like this? No, actually, Jerry, it's pretty colorful, and uh, some of the cars are uh, pretty noisy. They don't, the authorities don't care if you run without mufflers down there. As a matter of fact, the people in the little towns we go through seem to love it. The faster you go through and the uh, more noise you make, every time we round the corner, it seems the corner is packed with people and the policemen are there waving to us to go faster, faster, faster. So uh, we usually oblige them. One year we went down the side of a volcano in, uh, on a dirt road. And that one was really, I suppose, I never had time to look at the speedometer. I suppose we didn't get over 25 miles an hour. The road was so bad. But uh, other times, on um, some of the speed tests on excellent highways, we get, may get up as fast as uh, 85 or 90, I suppose. Although the speed tests are rather short, and none of them more than uh, four or five miles long. Would you have the same type of computer in your Renault this year as you did last? Yes, we'll have exactly the same kind, a NAVAID, manufactured by a, one of our club members here in Dallas. How many computers will be in the race this year? As far as I know, only two, and both of them will be 
uh, the same type of computer. The other one will be uh, in Clyde and Carolyn Durbin Dotson 240Z, uh, also from Dallas. There will be six cars from Dallas running this year. What would you have to say you, you would have to have in order to win the rally? Could you uh, condense it into several things? I think so. First, you'd have to have a very reliable car. Second, you have to have a good bit of luck. And uh, you need a reasonable amount of uh, driving skill and rally skill. Traditionally, there's not been a close working relationship between the two departments. And indeed, through the welfare reform legislation that has passed the House of Representatives, uh, uh, both in the development of legislation and in working in the, the planning for implementation uh, downstream, uh, we have developed a very close, uh, unified uh, planning effort, uh, a very cooperative attitude between the two departments. And I think that's very encouraging, uh, particularly from the standpoint of the taxpayer.
The philosophy is that uh, we would like to take all of the action that we can to effectively preserve the neighborhood school concept and to avoid having our children sent uh, a long way away from home in order to go to school. And in order to do that, we have proposed, among other things, that we circulate a petition which can be signed by anyone who is interested in supporting the same goal. To whom will this petition be sent? Well, the petition, uh, the organization is very new, and uh, no definitive decisions have been made, except that we certainly want to call it to the attention of Judge Taylor in some way or other in an appropriate way. And we think that it might be appropriate to furnish copies of the signed petition to governors, to congressmen, uh, or to whomever else might be interested in the matter. Mr. Pierce, what are the major points of your petition? The major points are that uh, this is not related to where you live, what the color of your skin is, uh, what your economic status is. It is simply a question of avoiding having our children travel very long distances in order to be able to, being forced to travel long distances in order to be able to go to school. This would amount to from seven to 11 cents of the tax rate next year. In addition to that, we could pay Love Field's bonded indebtedness out of the Love Field account rather than carrying on surpluses from year to year in the Love Field account. In addition to that, we could impose not a citywide garbage fee, but start charging a fee to all people who choose not to put their garbage cans either at the alley or at the curb. In other words, charge for special services. It costs more to pick it up from a guy's garage uh, than it does from uh, the majority of citizens who put it on the curb or in the alley. And I think this is only reasonable that we consider that type of a fee. You've also said you were opposed to the, uh, the continuing pay design of the new city hall. Why is that? First of all, building of a city hall will increase the city taxes, and especially the pay design. The pay design has run over a third more than the citizens voted in 1967. I think that we can build a good conventional style city hall within the $26 million remaining.